Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying video production where I'll be tying my favourite flies and sharing them with you guys different methods of tying them to make it easier for catching fish and, and keeping you entertained in this lockdown period so at the end of each of the videos I'll have a wee list of materials I'll have a link to my online shop uh, if I don't have the materials in stock I will tell you where to get them uh, so you can tie these flies, also the flies will obviously be on my, my, my online shop as well. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe, your families are staying safe and I, I really do hope that uh, we're going to get out fishing at some point. I know some lucky people are getting out in different places around the world, we obviously can't get out. Hopefully soon, hopefully Nicola is going to let the Scotland people out soon. But anyway... Let's get some flies tied. I've tied a few already this morning. So this one I'm going to tie is my 1530 competition heavyweight bronze, right? I'm going to use some of the new black thread that I've been using. I do believe in using products that I sell. I've been testing this stuff out for the last three or four days. I haven't done many videos recently. I do have quite a few done today. Uh, it's almost it's supposed to be an 8 but it feels more like a 10-0, maybe a 12 So we're going to be using hook, thread, uh, for the tail. We're going to be needing some golden pheasant tippets, just standard ones, not dyed or anything. We're using some, I really love this stuff, Spectra Flash Stubborn for Cyber. Honestly, look at it, look how gorgeous and reflective and shiny that is. So that's what we're going to use for the body. Going to need a, a nice gold wire rib, doesn't matter which one you're using. Veniard's one's just as good as this. This is just because this is a spool that I'm using until it's done, I won't move on to another spool. Uh, but uni wire, Veniard's, uh, I've got some new Cybia wires in which are really, really good as well. It's personal preference or what you have, what you're actually been using. So there's no point in me opening up new spools when I've already got spools that I'm using. Uh, we're also going to need some red game ginger cock hackle fibres for the, the, the for the throat hackle and then we're going to need lastly some bronze mallard now I don't sell bronze mallard the best place you can get it is Cook's Hill uh, Steve Cooper does nice big bulk bags they're not that cheap but they're not that expensive for what you get you get a lot in it I actually need to get some soon because I'm running out. So let's get this fly started. So get my black thread. Now the other thing you could do is you could use the ruby red uh, 14 0 for the head and it'll give you a nice wee contrast. But I'm just going to tie it with the black. So we'll go down. Get my golden pheasant. Now, when was the last time you used a golden pheasant? Tip it. I mean honestly. It was one of them things that that was the the marabou of the day. You know, every wet fly had golden pheasant tippet or topping or whatever, and it is a beautiful feather. So we'll just tie that in. But you know, in the olden days, you were tying all your wet flies. The tail was either this, or it was the crest. You know, for your invictors and blah de blah. So get some gold wire now. Back in the day as well, we didn't use wire that much because a lot of the wires back in the day were really, really stiff. They're a lot more softer nowadays and supple, but we tended more to use the French uh, oval tinsels. And I can't remember the last time I used an oval tinsel, to be quite honest. I, pre I much prefer wire. So we'll tie our gold wire in, then we'll just get a wee bit of wax on the thread. Now, as I've said before, what I do is cut a corner off the bag I mean look at that shining and that's through the bag it really has cracking materials you know and I, I, I fully intend to get different more colours in to be honest because I really really like it so if you take it then you can pull it out the bag then there's no mess you're not pulling big chunks out at a time you can just take out what you need so we'll dub that onto the thread okay then we'll just wind it on. I mean, look at that. 
There are some modern materials I don't really like, and there's other ones that I think are fantastic. I'll just pull that off right, and tidy that up a little bit. Okay, then all we're going to do is run the wire. And then catch it in. And give it a little sugar and a shake. A bit of a shimmy. If you're Scottish. And we'll just do that. Right, then I'm going to turn the hook round. And then we'll get a red game. Right, this is quite a long one, but as I say, it's just for the beard. Now you could actually tie the hackle and then trim the top of it, but this is the way we've done it in the olden days. Right, there's not enough there, I want more than that. So I'm going to take it off the other side as well. So I'm sort of doubling it up. That's a lot better. Right, I'll catch it in. Make sure the threads as far back as possible. Line it up. Do a little loop over the top and then just tie forward towards the eye. And that keeps it a lot neater and tidier. Right. Turn it back round. Give it a wee push. Tidy that up a little bit. I do hope you are all staying safe and you're, you're you know, taking care of your family. Especially if you're stuck in a house on your own, like I am, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. So I'm pulling the bronze mallard off. Right, I've got quite a lot there. What I'm going to do is pull it so it straightens up and then just fold it over. And you just got to work it until you get it to the shape you want. And it's basically rolled into that shape. So I could roll it again if I wanted. If I wanted a smaller wing. And I'm trying to get that level with, with, with the tail. So make sure you've got the thread at the back again. Hold it nice and tight. Pinch and loop and pull down. Right, that's quite a big wing. Technically, I could really roll it again and make it half the size, but all I've done is pushed it with my finger and my index, my, my index finger and my thumb, and that rolls it into that shape. And then just trim that bit off. Okay, and then all we're going to do is just pull the wing back and tidy this up. Now that, that Cybia stuff is a brown claret, there is a fiery claret as well I think, uh, but I think it just, it sparkles in the sun. Double whip finish, trim it off, and so just give the wing a little twist, you can see there. So what I've actually done is I've used two feathers, smaller feathers, but I've put one on either side of each other, so you've got the two shapes like that, right, so it's almost like you're praying, and then fold it over, and that, that gives you that shape of wing. So all it's left to do is give that fly a varnish. As I say, you can tie it with a red head as well if you wanted. It's like a modern version of the Mallard and Claret. The only thing I've changed is the, the dubbing. Rather than using a Claret seals for, I've used a synthetic material to give it that extra bit of sparkle. I remember back in the day, you know, it was like people came out with a new material and it was a shiny thing and blah 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 and they were all, whoa, and everybody was catching on it and everybody had to have it. You know what fishermen are like, but you know what? The old ones are the best ones, to be quite honest. I actually want a wee tiny bit more varnish on that side, just to let it seep in. 
and that's it. Okay, that like says it's a rolled wing, so you can just roll the fibres back in. But the fish are going to mess it up anyway once you start catching. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that one. A wee modern adaptation of a, a, a mallard and claret. Feel free to share it. Feel free to drop me an email, send me pictures of fish you catch on it. Or pictures of the flies, you know, as I say, I'm quite happy. I really enjoy getting feedback. I enjoy listening to uh, customers uh, and, and, and subscribers alike. Because not every subscriber is a customer. Uh, so, you know, I really enjoy that part of this. I like the interaction. So you can follow me on my Facebook, which is David C. Downey. Get me on my Instagram, David Downey Fly Fishing. Check out the guiding site, www.davedowneyfishing.com. Uh, the online store where the flies will be found is www.fly-fishingworld.com So, as I say, thanks for watching another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. Do me a favour and give it a thumbs up. Uh, pass it on to your pals. Feel free to share it on your own Facebook pages. Really happy for you to share it on your own Facebook pages. Uh, and most importantly, stay safe, stay focused. You know, and... and just got on with it because we're kind of stuck. So, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye for now.